Today, the data stream says, hike more, hike faster. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and problem news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, the US markets were down again today, particularly, I think, because of the stream of news that's coming out. And it really does underscore that the Fed will need to do more and more quickly. For example, US consumer confidence rose by more than forecast in August to the highest since May suggesting that Americans are growing more optimistic about the economy amid falling gas prices. The conference board's index increased to 103.2 from a downwardly revised 95.3 reading in July. That's the first increase in four months. And the median forecast was around 98, so quite different from what was expected. A measure of expectations, which reflects consumers' six-month outlook, was up to 75.1, while the group's gauge for current conditions also climbed. Now, it's worth noting that the share of consumers who said jobs were plentiful decreased slightly to 48%, but six months from now, more respondents expect business conditions to improve, and they said they were slightly more positive about their short-term financial prospects. Consumer confidence has taken a hit, of course, this year, amid the highest inflation in generation, which has led the Federal Reserve to pursue aggressive interest rate hikes. Higher borrowing costs may force consumers to cut back discretionary purchases and big ticket items in particular, which would contribute to an economic slowdown. Looking ahead, August's improvement in confidence may help support spending, but inflation and additional rate hikes still pose risks to economic growth in the short term, said Lynn Franco, Senior Director of Economic Indicators at the Conference Board. Gas prices can need to drop in August, falling below $4 a gallon on the average nationwide basis for the first time since March. And that contributed to a deacceleration in broader inflation, which took a separate measure of consumer sentiment to a three-month high in August. Buying plans for major applications, homes and cars all improved, and vacation intentions, which are reported every other month, were also much higher than in June. And so the median inflation rate, seen over the next 12 months, fell in August. And US job openings rose unexpectedly in July after a sizable upward revision to the previous month, underscoring persistent tightness in the labour market as employers compete for a limited supply of workers. The number of available positions edged up to 11.2 million in the month, topping all estimates from a revised 11 million in June, according to the Labour Department's job openings and Labour Turnover Survey, or JOLTS, showed. Vacancies have exceeded 11 million since late last year, and the unemployment rate remains historically low, underscoring the strength of the US jobs market. The imbalance between labour demand and supply continues to drive robust wage growth, which complicates Federal Reserve's efforts to tamp down inflation. There were about two jobs for every unemployed person in July, up from 1.9 in June, and some of the largest increases in Vegas were in retail trade and transportation, warehousing and utilities. Arts and entertainment and recreation also posted more openings from the prior month. Demand for labour shows no sign of cooling, despite the Fed's efforts to slow it down, and job openings failed to decline in July, and the ratio of job openings per unemployed, one of the Fed's preferred measures of labour market tightness, remained near a record high, so that suggests the central bank needs to continue on an aggressive rate hike course, tipping the scale towards a 75 basis point increase at the September FOMC meeting. Some 4.2 million Americans quit their jobs in July, that's down slightly from June, and the quits rate, a measure of voluntary job leavers, as a share of total employment edged down to a more than one year low of 2.7%. Layoffs of little change from a month earlier, and hires edged down. So while the broader outlook is shaky, the labour market has remained resilient. And economists expect the US will add another 300,000 jobs in August, and the unemployment rate will stay at a 50-year low. That'll be released on Friday, of course. Nevertheless, US stocks fell for the third consecutive day, as this fresh data pointed to resilience in household and labour demand. 
which really underscores the Fed Reserve's resolve to continue to be aggressive in its fight against inflation. Commodities from oil to copper sank as the dollar rose. The S&P 500 and the tech-heavy Nasdaq 100 finished the session on their lowest level in a month. Treasuries ended Tuesday mixed after an unexpected rebound in August consumer confidence pushed swap rates toward pricing in another three-quarter percentage point hike for the Fed's September meeting. And three regional Fed presidents, in separate remarks on Tuesday, underscored and reiterated Chairman Jerome Powell's intention to bring down inflation. A reading on job openings on Tuesday added to signs that the labour market remains tight and wage pressures persist. Job claims will air on Thursday before Friday's August payroll data. The repercussions from Friday are going to make us extra sensitive to a lot of the incoming data, especially around employment, said Sean Crooks, head trading strategist at TD Ameritrade. It's not surprising that getting that consumer sentiment data today and the jolts data had a pretty strong reaction in markets. That's probably what you should expect from now until the September Fed meeting, in particular anything around employment. In fact, analysts remain mixed on what recent remarks by Fed officials and upcoming data could mean for stocks, while Credit Suisse recommended investors go underweight global equities following the Jackson Hole Symposium. JP Morgan Chase said that a reading on the US labour market that spells bad news for the economy is actually a bullish sign for stocks. Meanwhile, bonds are sliding towards the first bear market in a generation, burning investors who erred in bets that central banks would pivot away from rapid interest rate hikes. The Fed this week is also set to step up the unwinding of its near $9 trillion balance sheet, and the impact of quantitative tightening is going to be relatively benign for the next 6 to 12 months, but could really start to amplify its effects on the economy around the middle of next year, according to Jeff Schultz, investment strategist at Clearbridge Investments. Other risks reign from China's economic slowdown to an energy crisis that threatens to tip Europe into recession with winter approaching. And UK inflation could top 22% next year if natural gas prices remain elevated in coming months, according to Goldman Sachs. The prediction is the latest startling forecast for the severity of the crisis that's unfolding in the UK, with hopes fading that inflation will peak in October. Goldman's outlook is even more gloomy than a prediction last week from Citigroup that price gains could peak at 18.6%, well above the 13% figure the Bank of England forecast earlier this month. In a note on Monday, written after the upward spiral in gas prices, Goldman Sachs economists said that if prices stayed at those levels, the UK will be forced to increase its energy cap by a further 80% in January, and that would push up inflation to 22.4% and trigger a 3.4% decline in gross domestic product. The UK's gross domestic product is expected to fall by around 1% through to the middle of 2023, according to Goldman. Annual output next year will likely shrink by 0.6%. That's a sharp turnaround from their previous estimate of 1.1% up. Concerns around cost of living pressures in the UK have continued to intensify on the back of the worsening energy crisis, they said. Real consumption is still likely to decline significantly. Even if energy costs moderate, as predicted by the bank's commodities analysts, Peak inflation will be 14.8% in January. That's still enough to push the UK into recession. And in a sign of the extreme volatility in power markets, gas prices actually plunged on Tuesday on signs that the region is stepping up efforts to curb its consumption and build up supplies for the winter. Prices have been extremely volatile in recent days amid thin trading and concerns about flows from Russia. Even so, Goldman's call hammers home the scale of the crisis awaiting Britain's new Prime Minister, who will be named next week Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak. The two candidates vying to replace Boris Johnson have both said they will take prompt action to address the pain for households and businesses. In fact, Goldman expects an additional fiscal support valued at around £30 billion from Truss, who is the front-runner. A later and higher peak for inflation will also mean the Bank of England may need to move more aggressively in raising interest rates. Investors currently expect the Bank of England's key rate to hit 4.25% next year, up from 1.75% currently. 
And German inflation accelerated to the most since the euro was introduced, on soaring energy prices, bolstering calls for a jumbo interest rate increase when the European Central Bank meets next week. Consumer prices in Europe's biggest economy, calculated under European Union harmonised standards, jumped 8.8% from a year ago in August, matching those expectations from economists. Food and energy costs led the advance, according to Germany's statistics office. Though their impact was partially offset by temporary government aid, including a fuel rebate and ultra-cheap public transport. These measures expire soon, suggesting price growth will accelerate further. Euro area inflation data due on Wednesday is expected to show another record increase of 9%. The Bundesbank sees Germany's numbers hitting around 10% in the final quarter of 2022 and considers the outlook highly uncertain due to the unclear situation on commodity markets. That's, of course, a consequence of Russia's war in Ukraine. That's also the main concern for the continent as a whole, with the ECB facing not only the challenge of unprecedented inflation, but also the resulting cost of living squeeze that some analysts say has already sparked a recession in the 19-nation bloc. A gauge of Eurozone economic confidence hit a 19-month low in August, according to data released. While ECB policymakers are expected to raise rates by half a point on September the 8th, some have floated the idea of a bigger 75 basis point hike, akin to the more aggressive steps taken by the Fed of late. And on Tuesday, Slovenia's Bostan Vassel said he supports a rate increase next week that could exceed 50 basis points, while his Dutch colleague Klaas Knott argued swift and forceful action. ECB Chief Economist Philip Lane was more cautious, calling for step-by-step -step moves to allow households and companies to adjust. There was positive news as European energy prices fell on European Commission plans to take urgent action, and while trading remains volatile, countries in the region have also succeeded in filling natural gas storage facilities before the winter heating period. Elsewhere, Spain reported a slowdown in inflation from July's record high. Economy Minister there, Nadia Calavo, said that trend should continue in the coming months, though analysts warn that any retreat will only be gradual. So the takeout from all of this is that the action from central banks will be more aggressive and will go on for longer, and rates will end up higher. This is, of course, of ultimately concern insofar that it will create more chances of a recession later. But with the data coming in as it is, they would say they have no choice. We will see. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.